Well, we looked at Excel and a TI Inspire to do uh, some computations for finite distribution parameters. Now we're going to do the same thing on a TI-84. So here I have a TI-84 emulator. And we're going to start by hitting Stat and Edit. And in List 1, I'm going to go up here to the L1 and clear it. Enter. By the way, do not hit Delete there. That will delete that list. You can get it back, but it's kind of a pain. It'll delete it from this display. So I'm going to make a about all oh, five or six um, data values. Let's see, I don't want any repeats. Five, six, nine, eight, eleven, and thirteen. Okay, so we have some data values there. Those are actually actually x values and then we're going to put some probabilities here and I need to make sure these add up to 1. 0 0.2, 0 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, let's see what we're up. 5, 6, 7, 8, okay we're already at 1 here so I need to bring 1 down a little bit. Uh, let's take 0.3 down to 0.22 and at least 0 0.08 for that one. Hopefully that adds up. Let's check it. I can quit now. That's in list 2. I can go to list, math, go to sum which is 5, second 2 is list 2 and hopefully this adds up to 1 if I did it right. Okay good. So now when we look back at this data we have here our list. Now, if I want to find the mean or expected value, I can go to L3, and this is kind of like the spreadsheet in Excel or in the TI Inspire. Uh, the only really the big difference is this one's not going to be dynamic, and I'll show you what, what I mean. To find list 3, we want it to be list 1 times list 2, so L1 times L2. So list 1 are the x values, list 2 are the probabilities, list 3 are the products of the of the probabilities and the x values. Now notice if I go over here and change this x value from 5 to say 3, it did not change the things in list 3. Move it back where it was to 5. So I'd have to redo this list if I want it to work out right. Now if we just sum up list 3, then that gives us the mean. So I'm going to quit, go to list, second stat, left arrow to math, choose number 5, sum, and we want to sum list 3, and that's our expected value, or our mean, 8.41. We know it's 8.41. Um, I could store that, say store as alpha, we'll use M for the mean, and so that's in memory bank M. Let's go back here to stat edit. Now that we know the mean, we can start working on getting the standard deviation. So list 4, we want to find the deviations, which are the x's, which are list 1, minus the mean, which is alpha m. No, hit the wrong one. Alpha, there it is, m. And so those are the deviations. Now we want to square those deviations. Now let's do that in list 5. So list 5 will be list 4 squared. So those are the squared deviations. Now in list 6, we're going to multiply the probabilities times those squared deviations. So we need list 2 times list 5. Now list 5 times list 2. And now if we sum those, we get the variance. So I'm going to quit to do the sum. Go to list. Again, right arrow, uh, left arrow to right arrow a couple times or left arrow once to math. We're going to do number 5 which is sum and I think that was in list 6. And by the way you can't get list 6 by typing an L and a 6. You got to do second 6 for the blue L6 there. And there's our variance. Let me store that as V. Uh, where's V? Right there. So that's the variance. And if I do the square root of that answer, 
and I'm going to go ahead and store that while I'm at it. I'm going to store that as S. That is the standard deviation. Actually, it's sigma, the standard deviation. Okay? Now, we can also, however, get these things uh, without going through all the steps. So to do it without going through all the steps, we just go to uh, stat, calculate, one variable statistics, and before we would just give it list one. But if we have a frequency table or a relative frequency table, we can put the frequencies or relative frequencies second. If they're relative frequencies, or in this case for a distribution, probabilities, then this will compute the population parameters that we need. The mean is 8.41 and the standard deviation is 2.48. Hopefully that's the same thing that we got here when we said uh, the mean 8.41 and S, the standard deviation. Also, once you've computed those, you can find those variables by pushing the variables button. Go down to number five, statistics, and you can see them here. Number two was X bar, was the mean, again, 8.41. And if we go down to sigma, sigma sub X, that's uh, variables, choose number five, statistics, and number four there is the standard deviation there. If we want the variance, we just take the standard deviation then and square it to get the variance. And so there's a nice little shortcut there for computing the mean and standard deviation of a data set. There's some introduction to TI-84 and using it to do some distribution parameters. If we wanted to find the, uh, let's go ahead and do one more. Let's go to stat edit and this time let's find the um, z-scores. I'm going to go back and, and clear out some of these things. Now that I've already computed these things, I can clear out a few things here. So let's find some z-scores. Actually, we can clear out list 3 as well. Okay, so list 1 is my data, list 2 is my probabilities. So I've got a PDF table here. So now that I've already computed the mean and standard deviation, then I can compute a z-score. And the z-score then would be the x, which is in list 1. Let's see, parentheses first. x, which is list 1, minus the mean, which I can get from this variables list. and I want to divide by the standard deviation which I'm also going to get from the variables list. Now of course to do this I would have had to have run that one variable statistics with the appropriate uh, frequencies, relative frequencies or probabilities like we just did. And so if I compute this, this will give me, uh oh, didn't let, didn't let me do that. I wonder if he'll do it with the stored values that I have. M and S. Let's see if he'll do it now. Oh, I know the problem. Sorry. I thought I was in a different spot. Where I need to be is on the L3 to do this, and I was accidentally down below that. So now either one of those things I did before should work. So I should be able to go parentheses list1 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And that should give me z-scores. Good. Now I should be able to get on list 4 and take list 3 and cube it. 
then if we sum list, uh, now we need, sorry, we got to get probabilities next. List 5 is the probability, list 2, times these cube disease scores in list 4. And if I sum list 5, that's going to give me my, my skewness. So, sum list 5, and there's my skewness for this data. So that computes all those uh, distribution parameters.